Hello everyone, it is me Vegeta T23 and welcome back to my new what if. Today we're talking about what if Saiyans and Tuffles had an agreement. Before I start I'd like to mention that I created a discord server for you to join. The link is in the description of this video so if you'd like to join in and talk to me and the rest of my fans, it's there. I'd also like to mention that I created an Instagram so you can survey my very uninteresting life. I mainly post Osu stuff. Now back to the video. In the last part we discussed how Kakarot and Vegeta found their desired women. Kakarot found Chi Chi by helping her extinguish Ox King's palace and Vegeta helped Dr. Breeze with his Saiyan research. Kakarot got a Dragon Ball as a prize, took it home and flexed to his family. Vegeta then asked to train and they trained. Kakarot became stronger than his brother and that acted like a catalyst for Raditz to start training again. After a while, Vegeta ends up with Bulma, expecting a child, and Kakarot marries Chi Chi, having a child of their own named Ginger. Eventually, they hear about the Tenkaichi Budokai and decide to apply. With the recap out of the way, let's continue the what if. The tournament is in about 5 days, so they have plenty of time to prepare for it. In the meantime, they mostly just screw around, knowing Earthlings will be there. So, all those days went into just fucking around. The day of the tournament came and there were a whole lot of Earthlings. However, they saw a weird and really powerful Saiyan and Piccolo Jr. They knew about Piccolo, but they didn't know of that Saiyan that signed up. One person got triggered he didn't get to participate and that's Mercenary Tao. He knew he would get disqualified but wanted to enter the tournament by taking out the one that passed the preliminaries. So he picked Kakarot. What he didn't know is that Kakarot was a Saiyan and that he could easily kill him. While Kakarot was taking a piss in the bushes, Tao tried stabbing him from the back. But Kakarot simply just caught his fist and held it until he was done. Once done, Kakarot went ahead and punched through him telling him how he knew of his intentions and wanted to kill him quickly and easily. Tao is dead and in a bush, hidden from anyone, and Kakarot returns to the group. The tournament starts and the first star are Vegeta and Kakarot of all people. It starts with both fighters on par and it seems that they're both equal, but as the fight progresses, it's just child's play to Vegeta, so he simply knocks Kakarot to the bleachers, winning the round. Next up to fight is Raditz and that unknown Saiyan, which we find out is Broly, as the two begin fighting. Broly is weak in comparison, but has temper issues, so this quickly escalates to Raditz getting overwhelmed, despite Broly's father thinking it's a lost cause. Broly wins the battle. Piccolo and some guy named Hero enter the battle as Piccolo calls out to Kami, startling the scrawny weakling. Kakarot and his family knew who just entered, so they thought this is gonna be an easy win for a hero, but Piccolo has other intentions. Piccolo proceeds to power up, exerting his ki all over the place, trying to destroy the whole world and attempting to fulfill King Piccolo's promise. Of all people, Kakarot comes from behind and wraps his arms around Piccolo's body. Piccolo is still exerting large amounts of energy, but greatly reduced by Kakarot who is trying to absorb all this energy, turning it into strength. Piccolo's bones are shattering the more Kakarot is pressing him, eventually making the Namekian quit. Hiro, or Kami, is looking on in amazement how the Saiyan he appointed so long ago is doing the exact same thing he did a couple of years back. Kakarot wants to give Piccolo a third chance to try and make him turn good, and lets him go, making Piccolo fall to the ground in pain. Kakarot then grabs Piccolo by the throat and tells him that there are Saiyans on this planet and that he's not the best anymore. He then throws Piccolo halfway across the world. Kami and Kakarot are then eliminated for teaming up, but Kakarot threw a fit at the announcer, telling him that this slug man was about to destroy everything here and if it weren't for him, he would cry in the other world. The announcer actually listened and decided to let the two be. So Kakarot thanks the guy and descends back on the ground. The next two are Roshi and Krillin and they fight it out with Krillin winning. 
Semi-finals are up and the two to fight are Vegeta and Broly. The battle commences and Vegeta is actually trying this time. Broly is still sane and doesn't get all those boosts, but eventually he gets triggered and proceeds to wipe the floor with Vegeta. Vegeta got angry and exploded in rage, giving him a slight little boost to his power, but it was more of a waste than help as Broly went and annihilated Vegeta's pride. Broly wins this round. Hero and Krillin are up, and Krillin wins since Kami has no use for the anorexic family man anymore. The last battle commenced, Krillin and Broly, and after receiving a beating of a lifetime, Krillin forfeits due to a broken neck. Krillin is transported to the hospital since he's still breathing, and Broly is considered the winner of the tournament. Vegeta is surprised there's someone stronger than him, and believes he might be one of the Saiyan Tuffle hybrids. Regardless, Vegeta congratulates Broly on his win, and questions him for a little while. It turns out that he's actually a full-blooded Saiyan, and that he's also considered the legendary Super Saiyan, properly breaking Vegeta's pride this time. Regardless, he wants to access the same root of power Broly has and begins his friendship with him. Kakara is completely amazed by Broly and wants to train with him. Raditz joins the party as well and the four Saiyans make a bond. However, Broly goes white and looks depressed as he sees his father coming up, grabbing him by the collar and proceeding to drag him away. Vegeta stands in front of Paragus. And just what do you think you're doing? Who are you to order me around? You look like a king, but you don't scare me. Close enough. I'm his son, Prince Vegeta the Fourth. Uh, uh. Paragus is speechless and smiles, properly introducing his son to Vegeta. But Vegeta isn't stupid. Isn't it hella suspicious you keep your own son as a pet? That's sad. You should be fighting, not licking your feet. Paragus then commands to attack the prince, but Broly is not compliant, rather is looking at his father in his cuss. Paragus then begins shocking Broly, much to everyone's surprise. Kakarot went ahead and grabbed the collar and managed to snap it off, although with a quite extreme difficulty. Kakarot then walks over to Paragus and, still not fully back to his senses, goes and tells Paragus to walk it off. At this point, Paragus proceeds to attack Kakara, but it ends with Paragus pinned down on the ground. Broly is getting a bit angry, but Vegeta tells him to chill and calm down as his father won't order him around anymore. Paragus orders Broly to go home, but Broly follows Vegeta and stands next to him to assert his dominance. Paragus goes away with his tail tucked in between his legs. Kakarot decides to take Broly in to give him a taste of freedom since they expanded their house due to Ginger being born. Vegeta is more than happy with it, cause now he has more reason to go to Bardock's place. During the whole thing, the king is getting old and is now thinking about making his son the king to continue the legacy. So in front of the entire Saiyan race, the news have been broadcast and Prince Vegeta is no more. Now he is the King Vegeta the fourth. Having a new king, the Saiyans had no problem because the son is much more sensible than the father. This was the perfect time for Bulma to give birth as she gives birth to a child looking like a spitting image of Vegeta. Vegeta knew that he has to name the boy according to his family's name and Bulma understands it. So we have a little Prince Vegeta the fifth. Bulma promises she gets to name their next kid, smiling to Vegeta and flustering him. It's been about a year and the kids are now toddlers. King Vegeta has shown brilliant potential, as well as Ginger. Regarding the two, those are pretty much like sandbox friends, always together. However, the city started getting attacked out of thin air and the Saiyans are wondering just what the hell is going on. They can't seem to find anyone anywhere, but eventually, the culprit shows itself. It's Paragus, some weird grandpa next to him, and some blonde haired girl and a black haired guy. The Saiyans are now in one tough hell right now, and are trying to think of a way to get rid of those guys. The solution, however, is about to arrive. 
And with that, we're leaving things be for now. Thank you for watching. If you think I'm beginning to deteriorate my channel, then click dislike. But if you liked the video, hit that like button. If you'd like me to cover your idea in the near future, comment down below. And as always, peace out.